Hello everyone, happy Friday. Um, you'll notice perhaps that I changed my shirt. I didn't make it through all four of my recordings last week. Um, okay, so today we're switching gears a little bit and I wanna talk about current events. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna see if we can make some connections to slavery or not. I think there will, there's definitely um, two sides of the, I'm also just trying to hold my computer in like a super delicate way to hope that helps with the sound. Um, so I'm like holding it on my hands. Um, Xavier pointed out that I should use a microphone and then headphones. And I said, it's ironic because my husband is an audio engineer and has like a whole setup in our basement. And so it's funny that my sound is cutting out. Um, but we will persevere. Anyway, I want to talk about current events and um, see if we can kind of tie some stuff with the coronavirus back to slavery. I think this will, um, could definitely result in a debate of whether or not um, kind of these connections are too, too obscure. And there's definitely people who would disagree. Um, but I still, I think it's kind of, it's an interesting uh, way to think about things. So um, as you may know or may not, I don't know how much you follow the data about the virus. Uh, if you don't at all, good for you, because it's certainly, it's not a lot of good news and it can be really stressful. So I'm gonna, pick and choose what we discuss because I don't want to um, cause anyone any undue stress about that. But if, you, if you've been following it, you'll know that the um, mortality rates are very disproportionately skewed towards people of color. So um, Black and Latino populations are dying um, more of the coronavirus at a, at a greater rate than Caucasian populations and Asian populations are dying of the coronavirus in the United States. So um, for example, and I'm gonna get these numbers a little bit wrong, but like 60% of the deaths in Chicago, somewhere around there, 50, 60, are um, black Chicagoans, where um, black Chicagoans only make up 30% of the city's population. So it's, a, it's far more of the deaths. They don't, it doesn't equal the number of people in the population where you'd think normally there would be an equal representation because the the virus is not, you're not more susceptible to it based on the color of your skin, um, just just the color of your skin. So what I sort of want to think about is, is just, can we tie that, that fact? Is it possible or should we, or um, is it responsible or irresponsible? I'm going to pose a lot of questions to you guys and, and not, give a, not give a lot of answers, but is it possible to tie that back to, to slavery and back to the institutions of slavery sort of founding this country and then the ensuing racism that I'm sure you noticed in the timeline where it went, all of a sudden it went to like, oh, now we're not allowing interracial marriages, became part of the slavery time, timeline where that was not so much um, something that was the beginnings of slavery were about economics and then it, it became more and more about the color of people's skin. So I'm gonna have you look at two See, I go a week and I don't remember how to do this anymore, guys. Okay, no, this is how you do it. Share, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. You can see me, yes? And you can see my screen, great. So I'm sharing two articles with you. Uh, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with this one. Uh, it's very short and it's basically statistics. It's from the Pew Research um, Center. So it's just numbers, it's gonna be, relatively unbiased numbers that you're going to look at and it's basically how Americans feel about if if our society still um if slavery still affects our society today um so it just breaks down by um if you're a republican or a democrat if you're white black okay um, I don't know what just happened, but maybe things just paused for you. I don't know. Um, sorry about that. Let's uh, go back to share screen and uh, figure this out. Okay. So, as I was saying, it breaks uh, things down by um, white, black, Hispanic, Republican leaning or Democratic leaning, and how people feel about if slavery continues to affect this country's race, racial racism and racial progress and, and race relations in this country. And um, the majority of Americans, 
uh, 63% believe that um, the position of Black people in American society uh, today, mm, sorry, the legacy of slavery still resonates for many Americans, according to a Pew, Pew Research Survey Center survey conducted earlier this year with 63% believing it affects the position of Black people in American society today, either a great deal or a fair amount. And that's from June 17th, 2019. So it's a relatively recent survey. So the perception of the majority of Americans is that slavery still impacts their lives. So I just wanted to kind of point that out as like, this is like, this is something that people still, most Americans still believe. Obviously, um, the numbers of Black Americans who believe it is higher than the numbers of white Americans, and, and also, maybe not surprisingly, the numbers of Democrats who believe that slavery affects it a great deal is more than the numbers of Republican leaning. So that's just sort of some, some information. You don't really, you know, you can just kind of listen to what I'm saying, but if you, I'm, I will include this link so you can go back and look at these numbers on your own. And then I'm, I'm going to point out an article to you that's in the New Yorker that is called sort of somberly and um, a little drastically, I would say, the Black Plague. And uh, the little headline underneath here says, public officials lament the way that the coronavirus is engulfing Black communities. The question is, what are they prepared to do about it? I do not want you to read this entire article. It's really long. I just want you to read the first section up until this first T here. So the first um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine paragraphs. Um, because it just kind of breaks it down in more detail exactly how, how and why Black Americans are affected more severely by the coronavirus. And a lot of that has to do with pre-existing health conditions. And um, if, you, if you're interested in this, please read the entire article. It's just, it is a little, it's a little long. Um, and it's, you know, Oh, oops. Okay, back to me. It's most certainly written for adults. So um, I think I want you to just take a look at that and, and, and keep in mind the other article and sort of what you kind of thought about with slavery over the past week and draw some conclusions. I'm going to put a uh, in the Google assignment a place for you to just speak your opinion. Um, obviously, the New Yorker article is extremely biased. It's very biased. I actually do want to read the last paragraph too. I just think the last paragraph is really good. But it's bias. It's it is not. It, it's very bias. Very bias article. Um, you know the saying. You know racism in this country and and systematic racism is what's caused the um, the issue. Is one of the is the leading thing that has caused the issue of the discrepancies between the deaths of white and black Americans of coronavirus. So it is definitely bias. Um, the other side of this would be that. Um, well, there's a lot of other sides to it, but it, it's basically that no slavery and the institution of slavery was a long time ago. There's been generations of of people that have come on that have been able to you know come out of poverty since then, and and you know we have a a, um, a community of pull yourself up by your bootstraps and everybody has equal chance, and you know that that that's not true. So that that is the other side of the of the argument. So I want you to. Think about it. Sorry, I'm moving around. I know that's annoying. Um, think about what you think, if, if there is a connection and why you think that and what other questions you would have. And I think we'll um, continue this tie-in of sort of states' rights, um, racism, slavery, and, and how it continues to impact our world throughout current events uh, in this quarter. So read that first, whatever I just said, 10 paragraphs. And the last two, I just think they're, um, they're kind of a good summary of the author's perspective. And you'll share your thoughts with me and it will be in a Google Doc. So this time I'll, it, they will not be anonymous for me in, um, in Google Drive. So I will definitely know who said all the answers. And, um, and then we'll continue to discuss it. And I, and I would even love if you, if you get a chance to complete this assignment before 11:30, and you want to come to the Q and A to send, kind of discuss your ideas. I think that would be great. But obviously, I know you have math and um, science lessons and things to do before the Q and A. So don't stress if you don't get a chance to do that. Maybe I'll just release this um, mini lesson now. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, thank you for attending my vlog. <laughs> I hope you guys are well, 
and that you have a great weekend. And um, I will see you either tomorrow in book club or because I'm actually recording this on Thursday, or I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.